Today we're going to start out with like a little primer. We're going to do a career talk, right? Um, it's not going to be a conventional career talk, but I think all of our staff is going to give a little bit of information, share a little bit about our experience with civic engagement. It's going to be a lot of fun, a lot of knowledge. And then the next half hour after that, we have some amazing guests here to speak with you about civic engagement and how they've made a career out of it and all their little awesome tips for you to engage yourself. And then after that, we're gonna do our youth choice workshops and one of them will be voting power of young people and the other one will be fact checking media and information comprehension and for both of those we have amazing guests to help facilitate the learning here and i hope that you all are super tip-top shape really excited to ask all these questions and learn um, from all these amazing guests that we have today so make sure that you are on top of it asking questions right doing some good listening and we can go on to the next slide and the one after that. So we did the announcements. Okay, let's do this word cloud. And we go up to this link up here, right? So pollev.com slash David James Co. 462. Or I guess you could text his whole name, basically, to this number, 22333. I'd just like to clarify, like, I don't get to pick the thing, <laughs> you know, I don't get to pick the URL. Hey. I think Dave does, and he's just being bashful. I've got a question. Is the, is the link to the website up there for this? Yeah, it's all the way at the top. So go to that. I'm going to, I'm typing it in the chat right now. I almost sent it with a typo, but um, I think that should work. It's not a link. know why it's not doing that okay copy that into your browser and then throw some words in there that you think of when you think of civic engagement Ooh, we got some going we got activism for sure community i love that responsibility Ooh, we have a responsibility for civic engagement. Ooh, getting them, getting them gears turning. I like that. Difference making, for sure. Conference. Ooh, we got opinion. Opinion's really good. Um. Ooh, these are all getting good. Issues, addressing, addressing issues, professionalism. You better be professional when you're doing your civic engagement, right? That way people can take you super seriously. Equity, mm-hmm. Optimism. Look at all these better. That's okay, Allison. I got you. Yeah, being, you know, everything's gonna be in public, so making sure that you're doing well. A lot, of, I see a lot of people feeling community and making community and, you know, making a change and stuff like that. So that's awesome. Everybody, thank you so much for putting that in there. It looks really good. Participation. Yeah, yeah. This is perfect. But you guys really have a really solid idea of what civic engagement means. And I'm really happy that you guys are all coming in this all ready to go. Um, I'm not surprised because some of you are super passionate, so I'm not surprised that even all of you like already have this great foundation. And we can go to the next slide. Okay, and this is kind of this definition that we got from Pace. Um, that's okay, Eben, it's all good. And then 
So civic engagement is the process of helping people be active participants in building and really strengthening their communities. And then that's that, that community might be a place or a shared identity or an interest, right? Um, so this might be your community where like, you know, the video gaming community, right? Something like that. It might be where your house is located. So we could say Washtenaw County um, or like an identity. Um, so like me, I could say like Native American community or something like that, right? Um, so those are just some ideas, but that's a good definition. You guys all really got it. We can go on to the next slide. Okay. And then this is kind of where we're all going to share our own little perspectives and experiences in civic engagement, right? So I can start it off. I'm already talking, right? Um, most of my experiences have really centered around school and college, right? So a lot of my experiences in high school and middle school and elementary school um, were all opportunities that I found to engage in the community um, through school. So like a lot of times that was like through the local library. I can volunteer and help out like younger kids and help out um, like for events and stuff like that. Or I could go like do um, like handing out food at a food bank. So as I got older, these roles kind of developed. So when I was in college and I had to take um, these courses and do these internships at certain places, um, it was more more important how I conducted myself and how I interacted with the people there. Um, and really like kind of building this community, strengthening the community, like we said in the definition, um, and making sure that everybody's doing well, has what they need and stuff like that. And I think that's exactly what we're trying to do here in Summer Works too. Uh, so I definitely count this as civic engagement, right? We're all trying to strengthen our community and make sure that all of our youth have everything that they need and, you know, even try and give them some opportunities that we didn't have when we were younger. So that's what I definitely want to do for y'all. Um, and that's definitely a way that I engage in like community building, which is civic engagement. Um, and then we can pass it off. I'll tag in Dave, because I see you right there. <laughs> I had a feeling. Um, all right, cool. So to me, civic engagement is all about like putting in the time and the effort to make your surroundings better for yourself um, and the people that you live around. Um, call that a community, call that a neighborhood, call it what you want. Um, because like if you and I aren't putting that work in, like some folks can just like hire other people to put the work in um, and, and sway their community or sway the nation in the direction they want to go. Um, like my experiences, so I've had a couple like public service jobs, like as a teacher and then um, when I was in the military for a few years, um, but I want to hit on experiences that were like, I guess, part time, um, because I recognize that not everyone wants to do it um, as a job or as a career. Um, so two experiences I'm going to talk on are um, the City of Midland Planning Commission and then some advocacy work I do with the American School Health Association. So with the City of Midland Planning Commission, um, I was appointed by the Midland City Council and I was part of a nine person board of Midland residents that would vote on things like, um, like plans for city zoning um, to um, have like permits to like change against the city code. So um, like one time we were getting a, um, a Panda Express in Midland and it wasn't zoned for having uh, drive throughs and so we had to use a conditional permit to say yeah like having a drive through is reasonable in that part of town um, and then we also um, approved the city's master plan so technically I was an author on the city of Midland's master plan um, which sounds more impressive than it actually was um, and then we also did some long-term planning type stuff uh, to help make the city more resilient towards climate change and then with the American School Health Association, I'm part of a committee that uh, actively advocates for healthy and more equitable schools. Um, so this largely occurs through like sign on letters that get sent to members of Congress on behalf of like a collection or a coalition of organizations. So um, the coalition for tobacco free kids um, or the school health activism coalition are all like 
groups of large organizations that will that will advocate um, on behalf of smaller groups. Those smaller groups represent individuals. And those individuals often represent individual schools. So it's kind of like really high level and it's easy to get lost in it. Um, but what I'm working on right now with them is I'm chairing an effort uh, to build advocacy toolkits that like parents, teachers, um, staff advocates, and hopefully um, even students can use that um, to advocate for healthier schools, healthier communities, uh, and more equitable spaces. Um, hopefully at the local and state level, and then hopefully those people eventually become like our state and federal leaders. So I know that's a lot, um, but just know like you can do advocacy and like it's just about taking that first step. And then I think I have to call on somebody too. So um, Zoe, is Zoe's ready to go. Oh yeah, always ready. So um, for me, civic engagement is, uh, it's kind of about, you know, what Lexi and Dave were saying about community building for sure. I think for me, it's also definitely about equity. So I know we've talked a lot of, in the past couple of weeks about, you know, privilege, equity, fairness, things like that. And so for me, it's important to do whatever I can to try and make things more equitable for other people and communities. And um, even though I'm just one person, there are still things I can do. So I'm just gonna go real quick through some things that I personally have done. So um, I like to volunteer. So I used to volunteer at a retirement home with senior citizens um, and I would read to them. And then I've also walked dogs at the Humane Society. And then uh, I've also been to a couple protests. So I went to a Black Lives Matter protest in Ipsy. I've been to the Women's March. Um, and then I've also made donations to organizations whose missions that I believe in. Um, and then lastly, I think just the last thing that I do is reading the news, just staying informed about what's happening. Um, and when I say it like that, it sounds like I'm always doing a lot of things, but I want to emphasize, you don't have to be doing everything all the time. Like civic engagement is also about taking care of yourself. And so knowing your own limits and being conscious of, okay, like, am I in a place to be able to um, give back right now? And the answer is not always going to be yes. So um, just as long as you're doing what you can and are able to, that's what's important. So all right, I'm going to tag in Drew. Yeah, thank you, Zoe. Um, so for me, civic engagement is being aware of everything that's going on um, in the world and your local community and, um, and contributing in some way towards the differences that you want to see. Um, so that's like what it is to me. And as far as my experience, uh, it's not necessarily extensive, um, but you know, I remember like I got registered to vote because somebody came into my AP psych class and made it really easy uh, for me to do that. Um, so it was kind of just convenient, but uh, I've made it a point because I know how important it is. I know um, how many people have fought, uh, you know, to allow me to be able to vote. So I, you know, I don't miss an election, uh, even if I have to make the drive to Jackson because I'm um, too lazy to change uh, my address so I can vote somewhere closer to me. Um, so yeah, that's important and I make sure that I do that. Uh, outside of voting, I volunteer through school and other opportunities in various capacities. Um, I sign petitions and I make donations, that, that sort of stuff. Um, so yeah, that's, that's my bit on civic engagement and I'm gonna pass it off to Dallas. All right, so to me, civic engagement is being aware uh, speaking up and allowing your voice to be heard or your presence to be felt. Currently, my civic engagement is utilizing my platforms to speak with family, friends, and other peers about important issues. Um, in recent years, I've used my clothing brand as a way to speak to you know not only like-minded individuals, people who are a fan of the brand, and you know anybody who's interested, and in, of course, just outward expression. Uh, from things like voting to civil injustices and raising awareness about different issues. My goal is to be active and to promote activity. Uh, some of the things that I've done in addition to, um, I volunteered at food banks, churches, uh, the House of Ronald McDonald. Um, I work with younger kids in the community. It's um, a Park Ridge Community Center in uh, Ipsy on the south side. So, you know, whenever I may be needed to do stuff over there, I'll kind of go over there, pay a visit, 
do things. And then, of course, I have a niece and nephew and, you know, so I kind of get involved with them and their lives and just try to be that person to stand out and to stand for something. So um, that's just me, though. Next would be Alexis. Okay, thanks, Dallas. You kicked me. No. Hi, everyone. Uh, when it comes to civic engagement for me, I'm very passionate about foster youth, and I work with the foster youth in Washtenaw County. And so every foster youth has a different story, and so it's really important to me to um, help and make them feel special, no matter their background, and break down any barriers that they have. So when I'm not working with the youth that I work with at Michigan Works, I'm always doing something with foster youth, whether it's helping them find housing, jobs, getting to school, helping with their kids, whatever I can do. I, I babysit <laughs> a lot of things like that. So that's my main thing um, that I do. And did all of us go? Or... Okay. Yeah, we did pretty good. Um, <laughs> if anybody ever wants to like ask us any questions, I mean like reflection is a great time to talk about this and um, I also think that we would love to have meetings with you. I would definitely want to hear any of your experiences with civic engagement. I know a lot of you are super involved, so hit us up. We definitely want to hear from you. We want to hear all your questions. But in the meantime, I want you to start brainstorming for these awesome speakers we're going to have. But next, if we go on to the next slide. Real fast, we've got to come up, we got to get this kahoot, and we got to get it going. Okay. All right. So everybody whip out your phones, go to kahoot.it. I believe. Or use the app. Some of y'all got the app and you're really prepared. <laughs> I believe that's what you need to type in, but. So while we're doing this, I can kind of uh, punch in and um, kind of in response to the activity um, that just took place, us giving our perspectives. Um, civic engagement as it pertains to workforce development or professional development, it's definitely important. Um, for those of you who don't necessarily know what workforce development is, real quick, um, it's defined as, well, workforce, yeah, development is provide, defined as providing training to produce more and better prepared workers. Workforce development is now considered to be uh, more than a single program or initiative. It's an interconnected set of solutions to meet employment needs. It prepares workers with needed skills, emphasis on the value of the workplace, learning and addressing the hiring demands of the employers. The goal is to place workers in jobs where they're in career development opportunities. So all of these things that we stand up for, may they be civil injustice, may they be voting, may there be uh, some other local or federal um, initiative that needs to be paid attention to. It could be um, on, on, you know, maybe something racial or, or uh, other biases that are kind of floating around. All of these affect our, not only our communities, they affect us, they affect our families. Um, with this whole workforce development scene, we want people to be as prepared as possible. We want people to be able to find the opportunities. So with this civil engagement, it allows us to create more opportunities. It allows us to um, address the concerns of unemployment because that's one of the major issues that kind of halt, you know, this development, obviously. Um, it's also stated that a rapid increase in the youth population combined with social and political challenges, it kind of agitates the unemployment crisis. And workforce development is a logical and important solution to these problems. So it's kind of, it can kind of be said as, all right, true, we need workforce development to solve these issues, but if we don't solve these issues, it's an issue with workforce development. So it's kind of a back and forth relationship there that needs to be addressed. So now that we kind of have the cahoots set up, 
see some of you are logging in. Um, we can kind of get this going just so we can stay on track for the sake of time. And I actually think that would be me. I'd be up to kind of read you all through these. Kind of coax maybe push. I see we got 10 people, 12 people, 13. give you uh, just a few more moments. Okay, it seems like we may be stuck at 13. Is everybody able to uh, sign in all right? And don't think I'm doing something strange. It was literally just a gnat in my face, so I was trying to get it out. If anybody saw me over here dancing. It was 14. Okay, back at 14. All right, looks like we're going. PD, civil engagement, civic, sorry. 105, under state law, Employers are required to provide time off for their employees to vote. What do you guys think? As it comes to one of our rights, which I hope everyone of age could participate in, that would be pretty awesome. We've had 12 for true, two for false. And I don't know how much time I'll have, but I'm gonna review the answers. Also under state law, employers are required to provide time off for their employees to vote. Unfortunately, that is false. There are many times <laughs> that I just have to come in late because I have to vote, you know? Um, I did it the other day. Definitely did it the other day. All right, let's, let's keep going, please. How we get to the next one. All right, Mari jumped out there. All right, true or false, the Michigan Civic Civil can't read, Rights Commission banned workplace discrimination based on sexual orientation and gender identification. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What do you guys think? Two seconds, one second. Mm hmm True. Eight people. Eight people. So the Michigan Civil Rights Commission voted to ban workplace discrimination based on sexual orientation and gender in 2018. But this can be challenged in court. There are no protections for the LGBTQ plus community and the Elliott Larson Civil Rights Act. One time for your mind. Next question, please. In Michigan, 2020. Employers are only required to pay minors 85% of the 965 minimum wage. What do you guys think? Ten seconds. We got eleven answers. Ah, look at that. Five. True. And that's something. In Michigan 2020, employers are only required to pay minors 85% of the 965 minimum wage. Yes, Jack. Tough, tough, toughy, right? Next question, please. The United States offers 12 weeks of paid family leave for families with newborn children. What you guys thinking? Eight answers, 11, 10 seconds left. Two, one, boom. Ah, false. So the United States offers 12 weeks of paid family leave for families with newborn children. False. 41 developed nations. The United States is the only one that does not mandate any paid leave for families. I think that's something. Next slide, please. Oh, look at that. Was that Josh J. Barnes? Was that who that was? MI labor law requires employers uh, to provide employees 
under 18 with a 30 minute uninterrupted rest if working five plus hours. I think some of you all should maybe have some experience in knowing whether this is right or wrong. Just some things we pay attention to as we go. Look at that, seven of us, true. So Michigan labor laws require employers to provide employees under the age of 18 with 30 minute uninterrupted uninterrupted rest if working five plus hours. Ooh, can you guys say that three times fast? So uh, real quick, um, what are some of the importance of civic engagement in this relation to the workplace, right? So as we kind of talked about it, some of these things, they seem kind of unfair, right? You know, only getting part of your pay not being able to you know spend the time that you need to with your family that other nations that are that are getting you know for families to spend that time it's kind of crazy right laws and policies affect the way we experience the workplace in addition to other communities we belong to don't they um so let's to tie pre the tie the previous workshop back to the essential skills employers value leadership professionalism the ability to work in a dive with diverse people and communities being involved in your community is a great way to build and to practice these skills as well as make an impactful difference what do you guys think about that i see the chat lighting up I see rj took a l gotta bounce back brother all right all right all right so we can move on and I think it is Lexi. All right. Okay. So unfortunately, one of our guests um, is unable to come today. They said they had a technology problem. Um, I think that we can all relate to that, especially in the age of COVID and everything's online and everything is going wrong some days. But um yeah most of like we forgive um sheriff clayton and um we'll definitely have to record um thursday session so hopefully you can make it then and you guys can hear from him too if you want to um but if we go into the next slide i'll introduce the one amazing speaker that we have today Linda Edwards Brown, and she is a Pittsfield Township trustee. Um, and she's going to talk to us a little bit about her career journey, um, her civic engagement journey, right? What she does to engage with the community um, and stuff like that. And I've seen um, her resume and it's amazing. So definitely listen to what she has to say and hopefully we can come off of the slides now and get it going. All right, Linda, you ready? I think you might be on mute, Linda. Oh. Yes, yeah. I'm ready. Thank you. So good evening. I am really excited to be here, to have an opportunity to talk to young people about the importance of civic engagement. To tell you a little bit about me and how I came to be in this place, for longer than any of you have been alive, I worked for the Washington County Juvenile Court. So the Juvenile Court, I don't know, I know this little thing that you can like wave and put your hand up. So how many of you know what the Juvenile Court does? Could you just wave that little hand? Okay. okay. So the, the juvenile court is the arm of the judicial system that works primarily with young people, people just like you. So for over four decades, which I know is a really, really long time, my job was to make sure that kids their parents, communities, got the services that they needed and that they deserved. You know, we have this idea that if someone's involved with the court, then 
they must be a bad person. They must have done something wrong, right? Well, that's not necessarily true. Because think about yourself and think about the worst thing that you've ever done. Would you want to be defined by that one thing? I see some of your faces saying, oh, no, I don't think so. I know I certainly would not want to be defined by the one thing, the one mistake that I made in my life. So for me, working as an administrator for the juvenile court, I had the opportunity to talk to kids and to talk to parents and to talk to folks like Sheriff Clayton about opportunities for kids that all of us could be involved in. So when you talk about civic engagement, I don't know if you can see it, so I'm gonna stand up. Um, I have on this shirt that says vote because vote is the first thing that you think of when you think of civic engagement, right? That voting determines what happens in your community, whether you're voting on a federal level, a state level, a local level, all of that impacts what happens in your backyard. So it's like super important that you exercise your right to vote when you're old enough. But voting isn't the only piece of civic engagement. At the court, we would work with young people to do community service work. So maybe we'd go over to Park Ridge Community Center, which is in Ypsilanti, and we would stock shelves. Or if any of you have ever been to Park Ridge, there's this beautiful mural on the wall, court kids were involved in preparing that mural. And it's because if you are part of a community, you have an obligation to that community to make sure that it thrives and, and that it grows. And for kids who are involved in the court, they very often don't see themselves as being part of a community. They see themselves as what the world defines them as. And that's generally something negative, right? So they're defined as, as bad or criminal or less than. And our job, at least at the juvenile court, was to help kids to understand that you cannot be defined in those terms, that you get to define who and what you are. And being involved in the community is a very important piece of that. There's an instructor at the University of Michigan. His name is Barry Chekaway. And you know him? Yeah, he's a wonderful human being. So one of the initiatives that we had with the court was with Professor Checkaway, where he would have his social work master's level students. So these are folks who already have an undergraduate degree, but they want to go further in social work. The students would come out to the court and work one-on-one -on -one with kids who were involved in what's called an intensive probation program. So kids who were considered to be on the last leg. So it's like envision this, somebody's running and you grab their legs so you can hold on to them. These are the kids that Dr. Checkaway and the social work students at U of M would work with. And not around the conventional things like community service work, but about youth empowerment and to help the kids understand that if you are part of a community, you have a responsibility to that community to give back. Has anyone ever heard of restorative justice? Maybe they talk about it in your schools. Okay, so it's the same concept as restorative justice. I see you, Avery. With, this, with restorative justice, you have a responsibility to repair the harm, to give back. Oh, I see lots of little thumbs going up. <laughs> okay, two thumbs up. I like that. So the U of M students would start out with our young people, having them describe themselves and what they thought were their, their attributes or the positive contributions that they could make to their communities. Most of the kids had a blank sheet of paper. They had nothing. But by the end of the eight to 10 weeks, all of the youngsters had something on that paper. They saw themselves as able to contribute to their community. 
whether it was doing things like going over to Partridge Center and helping kids learn how to play softball, or whether it was cleaning up a park, or whether it was going door to door with the Interrupters, which is a group that the Sheriff's Department works with to educate folks about their basic rights. What basic rights? Well, lots of folks in our community, going back to this idea of voting, think that they can't vote because they're convicted felons or because they have spent some time in prison. And in the state of Michigan, that isn't true. That is true in some states, but in Michigan, even if you are a convicted felon, you still have the right to vote. So going door to door, explaining that to people and explaining to them the process for voting, what is that? It's civic engagement. Going door to door and explaining to people who's on the ballot, not telling them you need to vote for person A or you need to vote for person B, but just helping them to understand that there's an opportunity to change things if you go out and vote, that's civic engagement. Now, I wanna ask one of you to unmute yourselves and give me an idea of what you see as civic engagement so we can talk through it. I see publicity. I'm sorry, what did you say, Brianna? I said I see publicity, and I like, and um, and I like, to, and I prefer, and I prefer you call me Brie for short, please. I like Brie. I will call you that. And you see publicity. Uh huh. Okay, tell me more. What does that mean? It means it means that if you're doing, it means like if you're doing like meetings or um, marches, then then you want the general <laughs> Okay, Bree, you're going in and out, but you're absolutely right. And I think I heard most, most of what you were saying. So a good example would be with the Black Lives Matter. The way that people have taken to the street to protest what they see as an injustice in our community. That's what you're talking about when you're talking about publicity. Correct? You can just shake your head. That's right. Okay. Yes, you're, you're absolutely right. I don't know how many of you have been watching the news lately, but John Lewis, who was an activist from the time he was 23 until he died a couple weeks ago at the age of, I believe it was 80, did exactly the kinds of things that you're talking about, Brie. And what he believed in and what he thought the publicity need to, needed to be built around was again, this idea of voting, that everyone has an equal right to vote and that you cannot suppress someone's vote. I recently heard, I think it was President Obama talk about how, although as black Americans, we no longer have to guess how many jelly beans are in a jar to be able to vote, that there are still issues of suppression around voting. And as we have seen, and I will not get political around this issue, but we have seen in the last several months how important it is for each of us to vote. Again, I will not tell you who to vote for, or how to vote, but just that you need to exercise your right to vote. And that's one of the things that John Lewis was famous for. And yes, calling that publicity, I think is an actual, is actually a good term for it. I think he would like that. So thank you, Bree. Anyone else? What do you think is civic engagement? Well, I did canvassing, so I went from door to door and it was for the, uh, I forget what it stood for, but, uh, Lucas Cole Lazarus Johnson um, like thing that I did like a couple months ago or like last year before COVID hit. So I went from door to door and I talked to people. Um, I don't know like how much is of engagement, but that's kind of what I did. Okay, that is absolutely civic engagement, Allison, because yeah. going door to door and sharing with people, just giving them information. 
Yeah. Okay? Making sure that your community knows what what's going on and how yeah. they fit into that picture. How yeah, did that make was, you feel? It was good. It was Lazarus Johnson and Cole. I just remember it. It was LJC, which was like a while ago, like a campaign I was with someone and we were like going from door to door. But I mean, I felt pretty proud about it, but I just thought like, I didn't, I didn't know that like I was supposed to do that except that I was going to do it. So. Mm. That's pretty exciting. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. So as a public official and I was called a trustee for Pittsville Township. So Pittsville Township encompasses parts of Ypsilanti, part of Saline, and part of Ann Arbor. And one of the things that I enjoyed most about campaigning was canvassing, going door to door, to door and talking to people and talking to them about what the issues were and what they wanted me to do as their representative. So that's amazing. That's really cool. So we've got publicity and we've got canvassing. Any other ideas? What's civic engagement? Is like speak is like not being afraid to speak in public could be an example of civic engagement. Absolutely, Josh. And even if you are afraid to speak in public, the way that you become less afraid is by actually doing it, right? So you put yourself into a safe space. Like I'm going to make some assumptions about the folks that Allison was canvassing with, that those were people that she felt comfortable around and didn't feel that there was any judgment going on and when you put yourself in that kind of space then you can do public speaking knowing that if you're here there's somebody behind you propping you up right not pushing you down or knocking you down or making fun of you so absolutely public speaking is part of civic engagement thank you what other thoughts do folks have um, I had a question. So wouldn't um, summer works be one because these past few weeks, well, the whole, throughout the whole program, they've been like preparing us to like, um, to like be responsible individuals and like help us learn about different things like credit and stuff like that. And so basically it's just like giving us positive youth development. Absolutely. Now, pronounce your name for me. Amanada. Okay, Amanada. Absolutely, that is civic engagement. When I talked earlier about Professor Chakaway and empowerment, the kinds of things that you're learning in this program are about youth empowerment. I was listening earlier as you were doing that little quiz thing and being able to respond to those questions the way that you did, I don't know how many of you would have known those answers before you became involved in this program. So civic engagement is about education. It's about increasing your contributions to the community that you live in. And learning more about that community and your place in it it's absolutely civic engagement. Good answer. Who else? So what about education? Can you think of different aspects of education that might be civic engagement? Going to school. <laughs> Going to school, absolutely. Yeah. Going to church. Yes, going to church. School and church are both institutions that help to frame who we are as people, right? So at your school, you're involved maybe in drama or sports or in debate. At your church, maybe you're on the usher board or in the children's choir. Those are all things that help to strengthen and grow your community, that help your community to thrive. 
yes, those are absolutely civic engagement. I have a question. Yes. Would you count a restaurant as a civic engagement or do you count that count that as not a civic engagement? A restaurant? Yeah. Okay, I would count that as food. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But having said that, there are a lot of restaurants who are engaged in civic engagement, who do seek to do things to help the community that they are, um, that they live in, that they're part of. Washtenaw Dairy. Has anybody ever been to Washtenaw Dairy? Yes. Okay, I know, amazing ice cream. Now, you could probably get the same ice cream in the grocery store, but it doesn't taste the same. Anyway, the owners of Washtenaw Dairy are involved in civic engagement in that they constantly and frequently donate ice cream to the nursery school over here or to the event that's going on in Carytown or for the fair that's happening at the Park Ridge Community Center. And that's giving back to the community. So, and that one surprised me, but it is good. And not one that I would have come up with on my own, but you're right. That tells me that you're thinking. Good job. Okay, who else? We've got publicity, now we have restaurants, we have education. What else do we have? What about athletics? Tell me how athletics might be civic engagement. Then I'll tell you. So Lloyd Carr was the football coach at the University of Michigan, I think like two coaches ago. His grandson died from a rare form of cancer. Lloyd Carr, being who he is and being a very well-known person in the community, the community uh, surrounded him and his family and decided that they would come up with a race or a walk, and some people aren't into actually racing, to honor his grandson who died from cancer. And the money from that would go to the University of Michigan's Pediatric Cancer Center. So athletics can be involved in civic engagement. I've got another example for you. As part of the Black Lives Matter, have you noticed all of the football and basketball and baseball and soccer and, and hockey. Uh, hockey, all of these teams that have come out and made public statements about the protests that are going on right now? That civic engagement in a way that we have never seen it before in this country. So you have examples every day of civic engagement that's going on in and around us. And Zoe, did you want to say something? Oh, I just um, set, put in the chat, Colin Kaepernick, anyone? So has that, did anyone um, follow what he was doing with the NFL? So basically, he was the person who started the um, movement of kneeling in protest, basically, of the flag and uh, the national anthem not representing Black Americans. Um, and so then when he started kneeling, other athletes started kneeling. And uh, so if you, um, if you read articles about that, that's really an awesome, it was just a small movement that he physically did but then it resulted in a huge tidal wave of people of bringing awareness to um, to Black Lives Matter and things like that. So then of course there's a whole bunch of other issues that are wrapped up in that because people are saying, oh, you know, he shouldn't protest like that because he's being disrespectful to the flag. Um, but that brings up another issue of, you know, how do we protest in ways that are effective and make sure that our voices are heard. So 
I don't want to take it too much from you, Linda, but I just thought that Colin Kaepernick might be a good person to bring up. Absolutely. And just to add on to that, Josh mentioned earlier about um, being afraid to speak out publicly. Doing what he did cost Colin Kaepernick his career. So this was a person who was making millions of dollars every year and taking a stand for something he believed in took that away from him. But although he is no longer in the NFL, he's still involved in civic engagement. He is still sending money to um, under-resourced schools. He is still helping to create legislation to change laws around diversity and discrimination. He's still being a voice, although it was a scary thing to do, and very often he knelt alone, but he took that risk. So that was an excellent example. Thank you. So anyone else? No, he didn't stand up for the flag and he was kicked out of the NFL. You just saw that in the chat, absolutely. I think Eben gave another example of another athlete as well, so. Did you mean NBA, Linda? I'm sorry. Did you mean NBA? No, he was in the NFL. Oh, well, someone in the chat NBA. said uh, NBA. No. He hey, Eben, would you want to uh, talk about the example you gave in the chat a little bit more? I don't think people know as much about uh, Mahmoud Abu-Aru as much as they do Colin Kaepernick, so. Do y'all hear me? Yep. Well, Mahmoud Abu-Aru, this was like back then, uh, like before Colin Kaepernick. But um, he took a stand for what he believed in. Uh, he didn't think like African Americans and stuff was like, I don't, I don't know what to say, like getting like the respect and stuff like they need and all. And he didn't stand up for the uh, anthem, the Nas uh, and the na uh, national anthem. Mm -hmm. And they uh, took his contract away after he did that. And yeah. Stand up for the uh, flag. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pretty much, like, um, yeah. Uh, thank you, Evan. Um, real quick, my mood, my mood, Abdul Raouf. I always have trouble with his name. Um, yeah, similar reasons to why um, Kaepernick took a knee. Um, he refused to, um, you know, stand for the anthem. And then, like, his alternative instead of kneeling was praying. Um, and then that still wasn't good enough for people either. So. Eventually, it wasn't as like uh, explicit as Colin Kaepernick's um, exile from the NFL, but uh, you know he got on another team and then like he wasn't picked up after that. So it was more gradual, but the same effect. Mm -hmm. Thanks, thanks, Evan. Yes, thank you. And this is going to take us way back, but Muhammad Ali. Exactly. Dave just put it in the the chat. You beat me to it. Yeah. Muhammad Ali, they took his medals away. They, yeah. Because he refused to go to the Vietnam War and they put him on trial. And they called him a criminal. So, okay, Bree, I see that you have an aunt named Angie who lives in Lansing, but I missed the first part of what you were trying to say. Oh, um, I, I also, I also want to um, point out, I also want to do an example. Okay. Um, what about Trayvon Martin, the guy, the guy who got murdered mm -hmm. back in 2012? Mm -hmm. Okay, I think that. Trayvon's death in and of itself 
was not civic engagement, but what happened as a result of his death was absolutely civic engagement, where people pretty much like they're doing today took to the streets to say enough is enough and that this has to stop. And what we're seeing today very much resembles what happened in the 1900s, what happened in the 1950s, what happened in the 1970s, and here we are at 2020 and it's happening again where people are saying that we need to live in a world that is fair, just, and equitable. And as part of civic engagement, they are protesting and taking to the streets to say, this can't happen, not in this place that we call America. This is indeed the greatest country in the world, but it's great because of its people and because people are willing to take a stand. You know, I wanna go back to what President Obama said about the jelly beans in the jar. Usually, that's the kind of thing that you see maybe at a fair where the person who comes closest to guessing the number of jelly beans in the jar win a car or a microwave or I don't know, they win something. But think about that for a minute, that that was used to determine whether or not people of color could vote. And it wasn't that everyone had to take this test, but just people who were people of color who were formerly enslaved. So this country has a strong history of civic engagement, and it's about coming together to support your community to do what's right, even when there may be risk to you as an individual. If you don't know the story of John Lewis, Google it and watch some of the speeches that he gave or read some of the articles about him. Because again, for 60 years, he was engaged in civic engagement and he tried to live his life in a way that would make it a better place for all of us to live. And that's what we all wanna do, right? You wanna leave a legacy that you made a difference. And the way that you can make a difference is by being your true self, by sharing that true self with the world, and by knowing no matter how much or how little you have, you have something to give. We all do. You know, it may not be the same thing. This person may be able to give money, and maybe I can't give money, but I can give them my time. Mm -hmm. And time is very often more important. <laughs> it goes a little further than money. So things like Habitat for Humanity, where people build houses for other folks, that's civic engagement. Things like working at the shelter, civic engagement. Things like cleaning up the stadium after a Michigan game, although that's not gonna be happening this fall. You know, civic engagement. It's all about helping your community to grow and to thrive and recognizing that you are part of a community. You are not on this planet by yourself. You're part of something that's much larger than yourself.